So let's first uh, uh, address the first question of uh, why we need to care about the climate change. I, I think uh, this question is both easy and difficult. The easy part is uh, fairly obvious that we are seeing the climate change, um, have, how the climate change have impacted uh, on the environment around us with uh, quite a major social and economic consequences uh, already become quite apparent over the, uh, the, the recent years. Uh, take a temperature change as a, a most common use indicator of a climate change. On the top uh, left-hand side chart, you see that uh, uh, temperature increase was mostly below the long-term average in the late 18th century and early 19th century before rising towards that uh, long-run average uh, in uh, the middle of uh, the last century. And uh, it's now rising quite significantly above that uh, long-term average in the recent decades. Now, if uh, nothing changes in terms of uh, our economies and uh, uh, human behavior, the planet is only going to get warmer at an accelerated pace, as you can see from the bottom left-hand side chart. Um, in fact, you know, if, uh, even if we change our behavior, we are only able to slow, not arrest, the temperature increase that already set in motion. If you look at this map, it shows how the different parts of the world have already suffered from a rising uh, a climate risk. This bearing in mind is not a simulation of the future. This is already taking place over the past decade between uh, 2000 and 2019. Now, the darker the color uh, of this map, the more severe the impact we have already ob observed. And if you look at the, the uh, left-hand side table, it shows that the six out of uh, 10 most impacted country on earth are situating here in this region in Asia, because many Southeast Asian countries are close to the sea um, and therefore, um, you know, rising sea level is going to be very damaging for these countries or countries are focusing on agricultural uh, development, which make them uh, very vulnerable to extreme uh, weather conditions. So here for Asia as a region, you know, fighting climate change is urgent, is pressing, and it's increasingly mandatory as opposed to uh, optional as we um, have come to think uh, in the past. And so when it comes to addressing climate risk, um, as Zayid mentioned that the elephant in the room is really China. This country is not only the biggest emitter in this region, but in fact, it's the world largest emitter, uh, full stop. China currently emits around uh, just under 11 uh, billion ton of a greenhouse gas every single year, which as you can see from the top left-hand side chart accounts for just under 30%, 28% of the global total, and it's about twice as much as the United States. Now we have done some internal analysis just very recently showing that uh, the world will have no way to achieve the Paris Accord if uh, China does not uh, join uh, in action. So it's in that regard, it's quite encouraging to see that the Beijing already announced a uh, a very um, um, ambitious commitment to, to reach the peak of a carbon emission by 2030 and then get to net zero by 2060.
bit about uh, uh, what uh, China is doing um, and uh, the, the implication of these actions uh, to the rest of the world. Uh, China's uh, tra energy transformation is uh, definitely going to have a spillover effect uh, on other economies and countries. So first, uh, um, I'll talk about the three uh, areas of spillover. The first one is uh, um, China, we know it's the world's largest consumer of a traditional fossil fuel energy and the raw materials. Um, and so as China is shifting away from those traditional energy towards a renewable and potentially become a self-sufficient uh, in energy, that's bound to have a significant impact on the global uh, commodity market, on commodity prices, on the wealth of uh, energy producing nations uh, with uh, spillovers to the stock markets, uh, currency markets, and uh, all these countries balance of payments. So that's going to reshape the, the, the global uh, financial system and uh, the, current, uh, uh, the currency uh, exchange system as well. This shows the IMF's estimate of how the economic impact from the decarbonization being break down into the various components. Um, and you can see that in the early, um, well, essentially over the next uh, decade or so, the net impact uh, from decarbonization is actually positive for the global economy. And that's partly because of the significant investment that we need to make on renewables, on infrastructure, on creating, uh, you know, more sort of a, um, environmental uh, friendly um, uh, EV, uh, 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 transportation sector, industrial sector, the huge investment that we need to make are uh, boosting GDP that more than offset the um, loss coming from the, the carbon tax. However, as we progress towards uh, uh, the, the further um, decades, uh, the internalization of these uh, um, uh, carbon cost um, here we talk we call it a carbon tax it's a more significant um, in offsetting the uh, diminishing gains from investment so uh, further out uh, there's indeed going to be a loss for the global economy uh, which uh, we already talked about at the beginning of the discussion Um, financial markets um, have already uh, on the, been on the move uh, to, to grab this uh, gigantic uh, opportunity the world uh, offers. In the equity market, uh, uh, sectors and economies that have been associated with a new energy source have uh, outperformed handsomely those uh, tied up to the old world. Uh, you look at the top uh, uh, left-hand side chart, which shows the performance differential between the alternative energy stocks and the traditional oil gas. Um, the bottom uh, uh, chart shows the amazing run up of a Tesla's stock vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the stocks of its traditional um, um, car makers that making combustion engine uh, vehicles. In the um, right-hand side chart, you see that in the fixed income space, the world has seen amazing growth in green social and sustainability bonds in recent years. Uh, the total stock of uh, green bonds alone has surpassed uh, 1 trillion, uh, according to estimate from uh, Climate Bond Initiative uh, last year. Um, and China is uh, a big player uh, in spearheading the growth of that market. 
So clearly, the financial markets worldwide are seizing this opportunity uh, as the world is making the, the profound transition.